While we were in Texas, did you guys get bit the fuck up? Yeah, I just had that staff scare. How were your runs, by the way? We did like five to six miles each day. Nick Bear, I think he has an ability to like set his focus on stuff and then just go after it full blast. I didn't get much sleep though. I think we overate a couple times and we're like, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Tuesday night was really bad after we got back from that steakhouse. I was shitting all night long. The the, the timing of this trip was pretty insane. The, the best guy in the game right now, like taking his, his classes. Where'd you guys train at? At uh, Henzo Gracie's in Austin. I was able to get in some sparring sessions with Marigali and I got to roll with Victor Hugo too. Pretty much the two best guys in the world <laughs> in my weight class. Being able to roll with those dudes massively helped my jujitsu. I didn't miss a day of training out there. A huge focus is is training when I travel. Getting to a podcast with Tom Segura didn't suck. We you know he shows up with his gym bag. He's got a strong shirt on and strong elbow sleeves and wrist wraps and everything in there. Mm -hmm. It's not like he just like lost 20, 30 pounds. You know, he, he lost the weight. He'll never gain that weight back. He was our personal trainer on this day, according to him. Shout out to uh, Nick Bear and BPN. Just getting time to spend with Nick is so much fun. Did he let up his cycle? Did he, did he say what he's on? He, uh, he claims he's natural. Trying some of that new mind bullet over there? This? This mm -hmm. dirt? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's actually pretty good, dude. It's, got it's, a, it's, it's nice. It's got a natty, natty flavor. But it's also, it's like, um, it's milky. It's weird. It's like, it, it, it tastes kind of like coffee and something else. I threw, uh, we threw some MCT oil powder in there. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, mine bullet. You got like eight grams of kratom in there. How'd you get the lemon taste? It's just a lemony taste. natural lemon flavor that we chucked in there. Nice. And um, no artificial sweeteners, which was is hard to do because kratom is like absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of difficult. Yeah, 300 milligrams of alpha GPC. I think it has like 75 milligrams of caffeine. Mm. Kind of top it off, make I it uh, something new and different, you know? It's nice. I like it, man. It'll be available soon at mindbullet.com. Am I lactating? <clears throat> I think did, you are. Did this? You squeeze a little. Already? Maybe it's a. Maybe it's going to drive up your prolactin. It's, it's, it's the drugs. It's the <laughs> That's drugs. Why. Sorry, oh, it's guys. The trend? It's, it's, my, it's my drugs. My bad. Mm. That's why I'm lactating. I like when we podcast and people always lump you in. They're like, you know, like you just take like the syringe and you're, you're always like... Why is he acting like he doesn't know? <laughs> I like that you never say anything, though, because it, it's pointless, right? Like, if you, you're like, I don't cheat, you know, it's just. I tried that in the past. It doesn't work. Oh, right. clean, bro. It doesn't work. <laughs> Check out my last you, test. As dirty as you want me to be. Yeah, you're on that cream in the clear, like uh, Victor Conti from Valco. Okay, what's I cream? I saw the, uh, there's, a, there's a documentary on, um, I think it's called, like, The Untold Story or something like that. It's on Netflix, but it, uh. It's all about like the Balco scandal with uh, Barry Bonds and all those other athletes that were involved in, in that whole trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, the guy that we interviewed um, that does the uh, stuff for the UFC, does the, all the testing for the UFC. Jeff uh, Nowitzki. Jeff Nowitzki. Yeah, he he's in the video and he's talking about what a piece of shit Victor Conti is. <laughs> and they're kind of going back and forth on stuff and... Victor Conti's like, he's got no proof, you know, that Barry Bonds ever did anything. And and then uh, they, they have this paper that is, uh, it's a calendar, and it shows, like, what to take on what days. Mm -hmm. And it says, like, game day. And it says the clear. Mm -hmm. The clear was a, a testosterone derivative that was, uh, it was a new steroid, or maybe it was an old steroid made new again uh, by a guy named Patrick Arnold. And it was undetectable. That was the thing is he couldn't detect it uh, in the current testing that they were doing in various sports. But in baseball, they actually weren't even testing for steroids for many, many years. Uh, it wasn't until the whole Jose Canseco thing, he let everything out of the cat of the bag, and then they started uh, testing in there. But um, it says uh, B, uh, let's see, uh, Barry, yeah, BLB. It says BLB on this sheet of paper. And the guy's like, could that potentially stand for Barry Lamar Bonds? And he's Ooh. like, I don't know that. He's like, I didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is not my handwriting. Yeah. But yeah, they were pretty careless, like with um, how they did stuff. What, like, they just throw stuff away. And then Nowitzki and the other agents and stuff, uh, federal agents, they would just go through the trash and they'd be like, oh, what do we got here? Mm -hmm. You got growth hormone, insulin. But the uh, the case that was made against Victor Conti, they had 42 accounts of him. I forget what they call it. Criminal charges, 42 accounts. And uh, they were only able to get him on two because they threw everything else out because 
he used a lot of insulin. He used a lot of growth hormone mm -hmm. and insulin and growth hormone are not scheduled three drugs. And then the drugs that were in question, the cream and the clear, they were new. And so they're not on any banned substance list. So the lawyers were like, <laughs> what, what are you going to get them for now? Like this is not even banned. And then also in, uh, in baseball, um, they, again, they weren't testing at the time. Yeah. So, um, maybe he's breaking the law by taking, uh, a testosterone derivative, uh, without, without a medical supervisor. Mm -hmm. Um, but he wasn't, uh, taking a banned substance, which is weird. So they tried to go through all that. But anyway, out of the 42 counts that they had against them, they were only able to get him for two. So many And loopholes. so Victor Conti went to prison for four months. And made like eighty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's uh, he insane. he uh, worked with uh, Tim Montgomery, um, and they had a uh, this project that they called uh, World Record, the World Record Project. And he was trying to break the uh, world record in the hundred meter. And it was wild because I didn't know this, but Tim Montgomery, he was an exceptional sprinter. It was unbelievable. Uh, he was only one hundred forty five or one hundred fifty pounds, and I've never oh, wow. even heard of that before. Like an elite sprinter, they're usually like, you know. Heavier. Yeah, they're usually much heavier. So he went from 145 to like 170. <laughs> and he was freaking just totally jacked. Yeah, How see, tall was Victor Conti? Victor Conti uh, uh, is just normal like normal dude. size. But uh, yeah, Victor Conti is whatever. But Tim Montgomery is probably 5'7 oh, or Tim something. Montgomery. Okay. Yeah. Wow. yeah he, so he did end up breaking the world record. It's kind of wild the, that Noah Lyles just ran a 984 at the World Championships. <laughs> and he's normally 200, 400 meter. He, 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 normally 200, 400 meter, but like this was yeah. how long ago? And was this Natty? This no, wasn't no, Natty. No, this is when he's, yeah, he's, on, he's, on, he, he's on some shit. Shit. So, but yeah, it was just cool to watch the whole process. They brought in, uh, they brought in Milo Sarkev, who's a famous bodybuilder, mm -hmm. and uh, he was helping him with lifting, which is kind of mm -hmm. funny because I, I wonder if they like did straight up like bodybuilding. Um, and then Victor Conti was like the chemist. I don't know. It was just fascinating. Yeah. Well, they talked about like his bench press, right? They were like, oh, it went from like I don't know two something to like three something, and then he gained too much weight. So like, oh, we got to dial this back a little bit. They had now to have too some weight. Yeah. They got him too jacked because he could he couldn't run. He would like run like. <laughs> they said he was all lats. <laughs> he yeah. couldn't wow. run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's crazy. So like Victor Conti, he would speak in like not legalese, but like he'd be like, yeah, I never once gave Barry Bonds a ban banned substance. And you're like, oh, okay, well, like, what did you give them? It's like, well, I didn't give them anything that broke the rules. <laughs> but at the time, like Mark said, like, well, they weren't even testing for it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He's like, no, all I did was help him with, like, ZMA and, like, some other stuff. But, nope, I never once gave him anything banned. It's like, Yeah, Victor Conti, he created ZMA <laughs> and created a company. And they, they did legitimate stuff. They did, like, blood work. Mm -hmm. And then they would have people do supplements and diets, you know. But then I think he was like... This is only getting such good results. Like the mm -hmm. results are decent, mm -hmm. but you know we can get different results. What was this we... called on Netflix though? Uh, I forget the actual name of the thing. It's it's part of an untold story, which is uh, oh. like the Manti Teo stuff. And yeah, those, so it's definitely on Netflix. I just the name is just not. I'll find it. Popping up all the concussions probably. Hall of Shame. <laughs> Hall of Shame. Yeah, steroid scandal, something, something. But yeah, the Hall of Shame. It. Yeah. I do have a problem with like the uh, when you click on it, there's a, a like a bicep flexing and then somebody pushing a needle into oh, that. Yeah, like, yeah. No one's gonna inject there. Like yeah. this is so fake. I was upset. Like this God is, damn, this that is would hurt. Now. I think. <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine your bicep. I remember Tony Huge telling me that he would he tried it in his calf. He's mm. like, don't ever do that. I'm like, well, why would you do that? He's like, I just wanted to see. Where's the worst place that either of you have pinned? Probably just a quad. And some people recommend yeah, that all the time. Like They're like, that. you should do the quad. I'm like, oh, my God, that hurts so bad. I would just say the worst was um, uh, L-carnitine in, in the glute. It, like shut, it just, like, shut my whole leg off. Like, I'm never doing that again. Oh, God. Mark Lobliner was like, yeah, don't, don't do that. And he's like, just do it in the shoulder. He's like, and even then, he's like, eh, it's too painful. I got bit this morning a bunch by, like, a mosquito, and it was right on, like, the bicep vein. Oh. I'm like, these mosquitoes are getting intelligent. <laughs> While we were in Texas, <laughs> did you guys get bit the fuck up? 
Uh, I, I got, had I luckily bumps all over. Yeah, luckily I don't think I got bit. Yeah, I just had that staff scare. Yeah, that scared the shit out of me. Dog, you and the staff, you got yeah, all friends at this just, point. Uh, well, yeah. dude, we like didn't sleep. Well, I didn't sleep. Mm. Yeah, like at all. <laughs> How are your runs, by the way? Nick they Bear, were great. Zach yeah. Bitter, some guy with the name that starts with a J. Jeremy Miller. Jeremy Miller. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. I haven't met you, bro. Yeah, how, how'd, how'd all that go? It was awesome, man. It was great. Um, everyone, uh, probably similar to jiu-jitsu, like just because these guys have a different capacity than me and because they've been uh, training longer and, and they're, they're way faster and stuff, they're not mm-hmm. like, all right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> they don't just take off or they don't like push the pace to make you – uh, just feel fat and out of breath the whole time. They yeah. go at like a comfortable pace. And um, I think it was uh, actually almost each one of them, just they're, you know, they're used to doing like eight minute mile pace is like kind of mm. slow for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eight minute miles slow. Eight nice. minute or eight and a half minute, maybe nine minute, like would be like the slowest they might go, depending on how far they're going. Yeah. Um, but they were still going faster than what I'm used to. Even though they were slowing down a lot, they're still going faster than what I'm used to. So, it's kind of nice, you know. I'm I'm pushing myself a bit, but nothing too crazy. Um, we did like around six, uh, five to six miles each day, mm-hmm. and it felt Jeez. awesome. And just learn a lot, you know. They they've been doing it for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like it's like a podcast. It's like, all right, let me let me ask some uh, mm. ask some questions while we're here, and um, just kind of like you would think, you know, uh, you get opportunity to talk to somebody that has been doing something for so long their answers are usually really simple. You're, you're thinking like, oh, they're going <laughs> to, they're going to tell me something today. Like they're going to say lean forward and, you know, flex your tibialis muscle and then turn this way. And <laughs> it's never anything like that. It's always just like, oh, we'll just, um, it'll work itself out over time. Like if you just keep running and uh, eventually, you know, if you take your time and you don't get hurt, uh, if you do the basics, then you're just, you're going to be better as a by, you know, should I, should I work on increasing my stride? Mm -hmm. And they would probably be like, well, your stride's going to get longer, the faster that you go. And so in time, you're going to be able to go faster. Therefore your stride will be longer, you know? So it's just stuff like that where you're like, it's a patience game. Yeah. You're like, I know that, but can you tell me something different? (laughs) Yeah. That'll change things right now. Other than just telling me to run more or something. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a really interesting thing. So Nick bear, I I find Nick to be the most interesting just because I'm a meathead and he's a big runner, right? I know Zach knows a lot and Jeremy also knows a lot, but Nick is large and he's running well, right? Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything different about how Nick runs versus when you were running with, I know Zach's an ultra marathoner, so it's different, but Zach and Jeremy, um, I think Nick Bear, um, I think he just, I think he has an ability to like set his focus on stuff and then just go after it full blast. But he's also like Jeremy and Zach obviously have that same ability. Of course. But it appears that Nick is good at like toggling between multiple things at one time. You know, he's a business owner. He's a dad. He's running. He just did a bodybuilding show not that long ago. And then he's, oh, yeah. he's still keeping up on his strength, too. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, I, I would be surprised if he couldn't easily deadlift six plates. You know, I, I think that he would be able to do that easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like we were doing, like, pull-ups and stuff in the gym, and we're doing, like, lap pull-downs and a bunch of different back exercises, and he's just he's just smashing the shit out of me. Like, he, we're doing pull-ups. I'm not, I was never good at pull-ups anyway, but we're doing pull-ups, and he does, like, a set of six, and then he just kind of, like, hangs there for a little while. And I was like, oh, okay, set to six. That ain't bad, you know? And, and he's he just says, hanging, hanging. <laughs> then he does like another set of, then he does another set of six oh, while he's still man. hanging. And he does like six more. And he probably did like oh, close I to, I love it. Yeah, he probably did like tw- close to 20 reps. And not only are they like legit pull ups, but they're like a pull up with like a squeeze at the top. Mm-hmm. It, and it looked like he was doing like a, uh, like a back double bicep pose. Yeah. And he's all shredded and shit. There's like striations popping out everywhere. And I'm like, oh, I'll try it. Let's see if I could do sets of six. So we did like five sets of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, he must have did about 100 pull-ups before we started the workout. And then like he's doing lap pull-down. And he's like stacking. Like who stacks the lap pull-down? But, but yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. when he's doing it, he, was, uh, he wasn't he was swinging or anything. I'm like, what the fuck? Like this is uh, demoralizing. 
but yeah, he's he's an animal. So I, I would just say that uh, with that military background, mm. I think he has an ability to really maybe go places that uh, maybe other people aren't willing to go because he's doing it in different. He's doing it in, in a bunch of different areas, mm-hmm. which I think is uncommon. So this is something that I, I'm, I'm for you. You've been running for a while now. Nick's been running for a longer amount of time. But I'm assuming, you know, when Nick started running, it probably took away a lot from lifting. Mm-hmm. But don't you see yourself getting stronger in the gym now since running isn't taking as much from yeah. you? Or is are you still at that point where running does take a lot from mm-hmm. you? Yeah, no, I think it will make a over time. I think uh, I'll be stronger and stuff like that. But my definition of strength is just so different. Yeah. I don't really care that much. I mean, strength to weight ratio, I think, is important for me. So getting better mm-hmm. at pull-ups would be uh, a great exercise to improve upon. But at the moment, I don't really have any. I don't really have any desire to do like real heavy deadlifts or real heavy squats. Uh, I do think that some of those inputs could be important and could be helpful down the road. Yeah. But I think I can get so much out of belt squats. I think I can get so much out of messing around with kettlebells, doing slant board squats, um, squatting in various ways other than just like a regular back squat. Mm -hmm. So that's where my mind is at now. It's not like I won't ever deadlift. I'll do different versions of things that involve hip hinging. um, And lifting something off the ground. And yeah, picking something up off the ground very simply. Um, Med balls and things like that after, you know, talking with guys like John Wellborn and um, just, you know, seeing various things uh, on Instagram and stuff like that too. Why not be able to pick up a hundred pound med ball and just walk with it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's a great, not that I can't do that now, but it's a great activity and, um, why not build a capacity to get better at it? So what I'm looking for is to just to feel some good resilience, you know, it might sound kind of silly, but I was running a, like maybe a week ago and my foot just landed right on an acorn <laughs> mm. and it just totally snapped my fucking ankle all the way to the point where my ankle, um, you know, in, in the shoe, my, the side of my foot hit the pavement. Nice. Like I, like it hurt. Yeah. Uh, not just, not just the fact that my ankle just whipped like that, like somebody put me in an ankle lock, uh, but, but it also, the pa- like the side of my foot hit the pavement in like a weird way. And I thought I was like dead, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I was like, ah, like I, I made like an audible noise, which would have been really funny probably if someone was watching me, but I, yeah. uh, oh, no. I was totally fine. I just, you know, kept jogging and I was totally fine. So I just, you know, I'd like to build more resilience to where I can, uh, do a sprint, recover from it easily, uh, jump, um, jump higher, be able to jump down from stuff easily. Mm-hmm. Um, just, uh, you know, I used to have pain. I think I used to just kind of accept pain, yeah. you know, oh, I, I feel fine or whatever. I think we all did. And, uh, yeah, I'd have pain in my knees, uh, getting in and out of the car and all that kind of stuff. I really don't have any of that anymore. The only thing that will happen is sometimes I just trained a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yesterday I ran like 12 miles. Yeah. So getting up off the couch is going to like take me a minute, you know, and I got to make sure I don't cramp up and make sure I'm hydrated and stuff like that. But that's about the only thing that will get me here and there is just, uh, a dose of a little extra training can sometimes uh, just make me walk a little weird or uh, slow me down for a little bit. That's something that like everyone should like think about at a certain point. Cause I think I was also kind of in a similar boat when I was in my early twenties when all I was doing was lifting and bodybuilding. I'd always have like lower back pain, knee mm-hmm. pain here and there. And because every single other athlete was dealing with the same shit, mm. it's like, Oh, you got, you got a little, just, put a sleeve over it dog like or or just like get some ice like okay it's still sore it's still painful but this is what you deal with and it's it's so crazy to be in a spot where you're doing a lot of more you're doing a lot of dynamic things I'm doing a lot of dynamic dynamic things but like there's no pain Mm -hmm. other than like maybe if something happens but you know what to do to get to get rid of it pretty much right you're not living with it because you think you Mm -hmm. should be it's sick what are some of the habits uh when you go to jujitsu, are some of the guys kind of groaning and making noises, or are people uh, staying pretty healthy? I think jujitsu is it's a it's a place where it's like there there are a lot of people who like maybe they don't do much strength training, or maybe jujitsu is the only type of movement and stuff that they do. Because I mean, we got to think about it. Most people aren't moving most of the day, so if jujitsu is like your 
exercise of choice. It might be that you've gone to work all day, uh, you ate lunch, you're sitting down, now you get up and then you go to jujitsu at five or six o'clock class. And then you're like, you know, you got that lower back that's still bugging you. Grunting and whatever. Yeah, it's it's still, I think in, in, in pretty much every everything that people choose to do, there's going to be a level of like, okay, I'm kind of okay with this because like you're just used to pain. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that it could be kind of hard, but it, it could be a habit that people could pick up is just figuring out different ways to, to just try to move more during the day. We've talked about this, but one yeah. thing that I've been loving that's just been helping out things a lot and primarily because in my lower back on the right side, right? I was a soccer player for years hardcore kicking mm -hmm. like this with my right foot with a lot of force, right? So everyone on my body feels good, but when I wake up in the morning, there is a tightness in my right side of my lower back. Once I start moving, that tightness literally disappears and dissipates. Mm. It's only when I sit down for long periods of time, only when I sit down for long periods of time and then get up that it's just like, oh, I got to work that bitch out again. So now, like when I'm sitting at home or when I'm just chilling, right, we have that, uh, what's that fucking stick we have in the gym? Oh, yeah, the mobility sticks, the orange things, yeah. Yeah, what are they, the, you know, the... They're called something. They're called something. It's called something. It's whatever, but, like, I'll legit just, like, allow myself to move around with that thing, get a lot of spinal movement, and I do that all the time during the day now. And that's one of those things that just, like, getting long movement has been so helpful in helping all of these, like, I feel no pain anywhere, dog. Mm. And that's really, really crazy. It's so Yeah, it's I see sick. you come in every day. I mean, you're you're rolling with a lot of monsters. Like, you're going out of your way to go against some of the best people that you can possibly find. And every once in a while, I'll see you come in and you're like moving your shoulders around a little extra. I'll hear you like make a little noise here and there. But for the most part, it seems like you're intact. And then when I see you in the gym doing exercises, you're, I, I never see you like squinting or making a crazy face or like, except for when we were doing our little bodybuilding routine mm. with Doug a little while, a little yeah, while back. But for the most part, um, and I think that's great. I think I would like to, I would like to see other people get to themselves to that spot where maybe, maybe, maybe it's for some workouts, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you push into it and maybe you do that giant drop set of like leg, uh, leg press or something like that and mm -hmm. make some crazy noises and stuff. But I just think that people do that so often that they're not really realizing that they're okay, cool. You sent a message to the legs and you caused some damage there, but uh, you also might be causing damage um, that might be hard to unwind down the road for longer periods of time. Yeah. I think you can totally push into workouts hard without it, again, having to hurt you in any way or or having to make anything that you have worse. But I think the to be able to do that so that your body feels good afterwards, your body needs to feel good before. So it's like you need to get yourself to a point where you you're, nothing hurts when you do any type of myofascial release. It's not necessarily painful on top of those balls because your tissues can handle that pressure, right? right? Um, I think that that's something that makes all the difference, which is why myofascial release is so helpful. That's huge. Power Project family, we talk about eating meat all the time on this podcast. Pause. Pause. But sometimes you might want to eat some different meat. Pause. You might want to eat duck, chicken, <laughs> Japanese A5 Wagyu, you might want to change things up. That's why we've partnered with Good Life Proteins, which also has certified Piedmontese beef on their website. Now, all you have to do is head to goodlifeproteins.com and you can select build a box with all of the proteins that you want. Then you'll select subscribe and save to save money on all of your meat. Pause. Enter code POWERPROJECT to save an extra 5% on any subscription you select. So if you want to get your beef every two weeks, you'll be able to save 25% on all of your meat. Again, that's goodlifeproteins.com. Links are in the description along with the podcast show notes. Andrew, what did you think of our trip, buddy? It was awesome, and it's called Stick Mobility. Stick, stick Mobility. Yeah, literally. People we were, were complaining about a— We were uh, right there. Uh, was it expensive stick? Why are you going to pay that much for a stick? Oh, well, uh, they're unique. Well, they're, they're they're very different. They can bend. But on top of that, like if you do need something like what we were sh you showed on your Instagram, using just the broomstick, yeah, was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Now the trip was cool, man. I didn't get much sleep though, um, because I like to wake up before class, uh, jujitsu class, and like get warmed up that way. Like I'll literally warm up with a shower. Like I'll take a hot shower. Mm -hmm. That meant waking up at 2 a.m. California time, which mm. was really hard because my stomach was, like, still digesting food from the night before. Um, Tuesday night was really bad after we got back from that steakhouse. 
I was shitting all night long. <laughs> I was just like 12, 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m. Like just it was just like hot lava. Oh Jesus, Andrew! And I was, it was like, worth it though. It was worth it because I was like, all right, I'm not going to be able to make it to Marigali's class. Like this is just not going to happen. You really have to say it was like hot lava coming right out my ass. Yeah, <laughs> From from uh, from bridesmaids, you you ever seen that movie? I have. It's, it's like time. hot lava. Don't look at me. It's, it's a fucking funny scene. But I ended up going to class that day too. I didn't think I was gonna make it because I'm like, ah, uh, it's like I'm just this is terrible. Like I feel sick. Like yeah. there's no way I'm gonna make it. And I started feeling a little bit better, and I was like, if I hop into an Uber right now, like we'll be fine. And I talked to myself that way too. Like, no, you're fine. Like we'll be fine. And I made it, and it was cool. And you know, training out there was, I mean. Dude, it was so cool. Like literally yeah. like the the best guy in the game right now, like taking his his classes. Where'd you guys train at? At uh, Henzo Gracie's in Austin. Um super nice people, amazing people actually. Like the whole like uh like community and culture that they've built there. It, it's really awesome. So if you guys are in the area, I highly recommend it. But um the whole trip itself was just like crazy, dude. Like um I don't want to say like, oh, like the who's who is all there, but like whatever we wanted as far as like, okay, we want the best guys in jujitsu, like they're there. The best guys to run with, like they're kind of there too. Best guys to podcast with, holy shit, like everybody's here right now. And then the week that we got there, what an incredible week to be there, you know, right when Marigali starting his comp training. And so yeah. it's like just being exposed to all that stuff was wild, like once in a lifetime for sure, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be a once in a lifetime for us because now we've made some amazing connections. So I could definitely see us going back and doing that again. But yeah, it's just seeing stuff on that level is like, I don't know, like the, like first time you have a conversation with somebody who's wealthy, you're like, Oh shit, I didn't know like you can do that. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is really, really freaking cool. So I took a lot out of the trip. Um, like I said, uh, not being able to sleep much sucked, but getting through it, not just getting through it, but like enjoying it and actually learning mm. was really cool because it wasn't like, like, uh, I don't, it just wasn't super easy, but that made it even more fun. Cause like I didn't miss a day of training out there. And I know people that are traveling will usually kind of make excuses for that. And mm. I don't think either one of us did all, every single one of us trained really hard every single day. That was, yeah. that was incredible. Yeah, I noticed that most of my travel now, it's like there's some sort of uh, like a, a huge focus is is training. When I travel, I'm like, you know, does a, does a hotel have a gym or like where can I go run? Um, and my wife's the same way. She likes to exercise too. So uh, no matter where we go or no matter what we eat, there's always like a, an attachment to some sort of fitness and then for all three of us, I, I think we ate pretty good. Like we enjoyed like a burger. We enjoyed a bunch of things. Um, I think we overate a couple times and we're like, yeah, <laughs> like maybe we shouldn't overeat like the whole time we're here because maybe we're going to die. But uh, it's just cool to have those uh, those things kind of locked in to where it's not uh, massively like problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that it, it was uh, the food was amazing. If, if any of you guys can manage, get into Red Ash when you go to Austin. That place is fucking good. That place is good. But um, as far as jujitsu is concerned, yo, that the 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 timing of this trip was pretty insane. Because for jujitsu, I'm an ultra heavyweight, so 220 and above is the weight class I compete in. Marigali is an ultra heavyweight, and Victor Hugo, who won double gold at this past year's Worlds, he also won the Brasileiros, which is a big tournament. He won double gold there. Uh, he's the guy who Marigali is going to be competing against in, in two weeks, yeah. right? Um, the first time I actually met Victor Hugo was at a who's the first who's number one tournament when I competed against Chad Wesley Smith. Victor was there, and I looked at this dude. I was like. This person's so huge. He's, he has a big ass frame, He's 6'4, 280. So it was really sick because that week uh, I was able to get in some sparring sessions with Marigali. I got roughed up. It was amazing. Um, the guy has great pressure. He gave me some ideas of things that I should be working on. But on the last, on one of the last days we were there, when you podcast with John Welburn, I wasn't expecting to be able to train with Victor Hugo also. But then I don't know, John and Victor are texting and then Victor invites me to come train with him and I got to roll with Victor Hugo too. Pretty much the two best guys in the world <laughs> in my weight class, I get to train with and learn from both of them and feel what that pressure is like because the, the wild thing for me is like the only time where I get to feel 
potentially world-class pressure is going to be in a tournament, mm. right? Uh, because I don't have many ultra heavyweight training partners with that type of pressure. And within the span of a week, I got to, <laughs> and well, there's we'll Big Dan. Yeah. I got how to train make, with those guys. How does it's, it make any yeah. sense to like, how, how do you, like the first time someone, like if, if, if you and I were to get on the ground right now. And you Andrew were, took this picture, by and the you way. Were, and you were to give me some pressure. I would just feel like I'm never going to be able to deal with that. Oh, Marigali made me fart. I know that was, <laughs> how that was coming I, I, to your mind. I wasn't even like going to giggle because <laughs> you were a little Dick. sensitive about it last time. I didn't even <laughs> say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the car driving towards John Wellborn, and Andrew's Andrew's like, "Yo, and Simo, did you tell in front Mark of our Uber driver? Yeah, in front of our Uber driver, Andrew's like, did you tell Mark about how Marigali made you fart? And he said it loud enough so you could hear it yeah, too. I, I was like. To, well, I guess I didn't need to tell him, Andrew. It was you just all chose I could to. think about the entire car ride. I'm like, dude, I just have to get this out. I'm like, this is this is worse than trying to hold in the fart. Like, <laughs> hey, everybody has that experience when someone like puts pressure on them and makes them fart in jujitsu. And it just so happens that I was quite gassy on that day, so it was bound to happen either way. I just I couldn't let it out. But it could be a good relief. <laughs> it was actually right here. Give me some pressure. <laughs> pop 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 pop. <laughs> But of all people to have it, do, like have it, you oh, know, yeah, the yeah. best guy right now, you know. I Only the best makes me fart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool jujitsu shirt. <laughs> right now, I know you're looking in the mirror. You're getting ready for your nephew's quinceanera. You have a long sleeve on that looks horrible and your pants don't fit right. That's why we partnered. I don't know why you're laughing. That's why we partnered with Viore Clothing. You see, this is the Boulevard shirt jacket. Fits great, stretchy. Feels amazing. It's the best long sleeve in my closet. And one of the biggest things that we love about Viore is that they have clothes that you can wear to parties. They have clothes that you can wear in the gym. Like I said, your nephew's quinceanera. <laughs> you can look great wherever you go if you step your fashion game up. Plus, this stuff feels like baby skin on your skin, which is kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's kind of nice and you know it. Andrew, where can they get it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you guys got to head over to viori.com slash power project. That's V U O R I.com slash power project to automatically receive 20% off your order. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying about pressure? Mark? I was just saying, like, if I felt some of the pressure that you're able to give, even if you were giving, like, 25% of of your maximum I would feel like I don't understand how I'll ever be able to deal with that. Yeah. But how do you get used to that? Like what 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 is uh it's Matt what do you time. think yeah just just Matt time and understanding I mean, like you can literally get used to somebody like just smothering the fuck out of you. You can get used to that. Yeah, but then you also get used to like how to what parts of your body to let yourself relax while someone's laying pressure into mm -hmm. you because there's one thing about pressure where it's like if someone's putting pressure in you don't necessarily want to tighten up because it makes it feel worse. Mm. So if someone's like putting pressure into you, the best thing to do is almost kind of like to relax. Like someone could have their knee on your stomach and oh, you yeah. could relax. You I, Yeah, I can relax through that. It's it's not, for, for me at this point, it's not that bad. Um, and actually this was one thing that I think is was pretty cool and it, it kind of shows what all of this, some of this mobility shit's been doing because Marigali is really known for his pressure. But Andrew has pictures mm -hmm. where both my, he has, he's mounted me already, mm -hmm. right? I'm in a fucked position and both my hands are up here. And he's known for just being able to really just fuck people up from there and make them tap. But somehow twice I managed to escape with both my hands up here. And I was comfortable because I was able to relax in that position with my hands over my head and escape from that position where most people are usually fucked because they don't have the mobility or the ability to relax there. You have your arms over your head for bigger guys. Anyone that's like over 200 pounds yeah. it makes the breathing a little different. And the dude is sitting right here, yeah. right? Right? He still ended up tapping me later on, don't get me wrong. But I was so surprised that I was in the position where you 100% should be fucked by an athlete like this. But because of the work we've been doing on movement and all this stuff, was able to escape pretty handily without mm. without panicking. So um just shows that a lot of this stuff is very helpful in maintaining your ability to move well as you try athlete. the WEC method on him. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did and you do the WEC it. method? The <laughs> 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 uh, it was funny. I was showing my wife this picture and I'm like, there's a whole encima under this guy yeah. right here. You know, like holy but what, so what's really, really freaking wild. what's got me super fired up about this picture or uh, this situation is like the first time he was smothering, like, right, he was smothering you. Um, well, he, he was, he had mounted. I don't yeah, know he got he, you yeah. in this position. Mm -hmm. You were kind of like 
you know, you weren't, you were figuring, figuring it out. But then on this situation, you're like, oh, we were here. And then you got out of it. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I, in a matter of like one or two rolls, NSEMA was able to kind of unlock the code. And it was just like sick because I'm sure you've never been in that position where it's like somebody that, like, the, with that knows much pressure. What doing. Yeah. And then for you to kind of like, oh, if I do this combination, then I'll be able to get out of it. And I was just like, dude, like, it was hard for me to not like let out like a really loud like let's go because I was just like oh fuck here we go again and then Nsima got out of it and I was like, <clears throat> like I'm trying to be respectful yeah. here you know like but it was it was I don't know it was inspiring as guys he still tapped me three times in a ten minute round let's not get it twisted so but but well, that's what I, I, I but this saying. is exactly what I mean like yeah. these are the wins that I that I have to take you know I'm, same here bro <laughs> but to see <laughs> you at, at brown belt doing this I'm just like all right like we're still we're still doing good we're still we're all right <laughs> there's something that like. I, from what Andrew said, like, I think the biggest part about this was being able to roll with those dudes massively helped my jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, I could already tell I came back, rolled a few times. I went to another open mat at another school and it was just like that, like it, it just things were unlocked just being able to roll with guys at that level. That's why it's like, I think it's super important somehow always like wherever, if you are training, just always expose yourself to people who are better than you. Mm -hmm. Um, because like if you're if you're not getting challenged where you are, I mean, you could do a lot of specific training and stuff, and that's what both of them told me. Like you need to do specific training and put yourself in bad positions, which I already do. But there's a difference when somebody better than you is now mm. like giving it to you. Mm -hmm. it, it can help a lot. Right, and then there kind of is no bad positions when you're so much better than the other person. Yeah, right. Like you don't if, really feel at risk. Yeah, the other person's just they're just not trained up to be able to do anything with the position that you're that you start from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a lot of those dudes just also like just their understanding of grappling is just at another level. That's why they can be such good instructors, but that helps their grappling mm. because they, not only are they good at it, but they can explain everything they do in a very precise fashion. Mm. So anybody can learn. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Getting to a podcast with Tom Segura didn't suck. Mm. Right. Ooh, that was kind that of was great, bro. <laughs> had an opportunity it, yeah. to lift with him and a podcast with him, and uh, it was cool. You know, he shows up with his gym bag. He's got his strong shirt on, and he's got his uh, strong elbow sleeves and wrist wraps and everything in there. Mm -hmm. It was great. And uh, Sean Nix, his trainer, has done such a great job with him to be able. To, I mean, Tom just he looks like a different person. Oh yeah, these days he's made such great progress, and it's cool to see that he's. Um, He's not like, it's not like he just like lost 20, 30 pounds. You know, he, he lost the weight. He'll never gain that weight back. Mm -mm. Um, there may be a situation where he gains five pounds, 10 pounds. Like that kind of happens to most people at some point you relax or whatever. You get in better shape and worse shape and stuff here and there. But uh, he's really kind of set himself free. Um, from a lot of that. And he was our personal trainer on this day, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went through a few things, like, you know, some wrist workouts. It was it was fun that we uh, got a chance to heave the med ball around at each other. <laughs> yeah. I love doing that movement. Um, that's kind of more like an Ian Danny type thing. He used to do Danny ball where they would uh, oh, yeah. play with like a 10-pound med ball uh, over a volleyball. Danny ball. That? Danny I ball. haven't seen yeah. that. It's pretty slick. Yeah. It's it is crazy how far he's come though. Like, and he he also mentioned that he wants to start jujitsu. Yeah, with mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that he, he's he's killing it, man. I think one really cool thing is what he mentioned during the podcast. I think Andrew asked him if, like if it changed him as a person, and he mentioned like how he just has become more. I guess it, it affected everything in terms of how he deals with people. Yeah. Maybe did he say he becomes more direct? Yeah. Um. So that it? episode's not out yet. So oh, isn't little, it coming out teaser. after? Yeah. Or? Well, it's just it's gonna take some time. So oh, okay. It'll it'll okay. be out. We'll say Monday. All right. This it. is coming out Wednesday. Oh. But yeah. No. I just I just asked him like how that ha like being better uh like because he was kind of saying like he's not letting like like uh like loose ends kind of just hang around anymore with his like mm -hmm. diet and stuff and like how is that carried over mm -hmm. and he's like well, it's the same thing he's like if it's not like kind of like if it's not helping it's hurting or if it's in the way yeah well, uh, yeah how does it help how does it hurt? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but um and so he was just saying like it helped help tighten everything else every other aspect of his life up and you know you just kind of don't let things slide anymore there you go that's what i meant to say there you go. yeah and i thought that was really cool well, with your diet, if you let something slide, a lot of times it keeps sliding, you know, and it just keeps mm -hmm. sliding and sliding. So if you let up some of these practices that you have, um, that's the danger, right, is that you just end up in like a fucking tailspin. Mm -hmm. And uh, with 
the way that Tom has been uh, as like a communicator, as a uh, podcaster, as a comedian, he know, you know he knows that you have to. This all takes a tremendous amount of work, takes a tremendous amount of time, mm-hmm. and so he. I mean, same thing. I mean, if he lets his comedy slip, it doesn't matter how good you are at something. Like those things are, they're not going to be optimized. You know, they're not going to be there for you the way that you want them to be. Whether you're good at running or jujitsu, if you're not practicing it, um, you're you're going to lose some capacity. Like you're not going to lose it all. Yeah. You're going to remember a lot of stuff, and you're still going to be able to be proficient probably, but you're not going to be nearly as good as you want to be. And then when you're done with that performance, you're going to be like, I really let myself down. Like that sucked. And then that can be like a vicious cycle. And once you fall behind on something, um, you fall behind on your diet, your kind of uh, meal preparation and all that kind of stuff. Then you kind of notice that you fall behind on your sleep. And now you're trying, you know what I mean? Like you just fall behind on your bills, you know, and it's just like one thing after another just keeps sliding downhill and you're like, fuck. It's a mm. cascade of shit. <laughs> it's a cascade of shit. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so that was a great experience. And then, um, you know, shout out to uh, Nick Bear and BPN for letting us use their facility, letting us train mm-hmm. at their gym and use their podcast. Um, and then just getting t- time to spend with Nick is so much fun. Um, you know, he's 33, I think. Uh <laughs> And he just seems like he's got so much figured out at a young age, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. But it also is uh, like it's motivating to me to be with him because he's so proficient at what he does. But then it's also kind of cool because he's asking me a lot of questions. You know, he's asking me about like children, you know, raising kids and being a parent and like all this stuff and even business stuff. You know, just because I've been doing these things longer than he's been doing, and I'm asking him questions about running and. It's just, it's neat to get around people that are going to help you to level up and all they are is like encouraging, you know, all did they he, are uh, is like positive. Did you let up his cycle? Did he, did he say what he's on? He, uh, he said that. I joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> he, he claims he's natural. I believe it. I mean, I don't know. People be tripping, man. I believe it. I think it's a testament to how he looks. Yeah. You know, he's in, he's in great shape. And I think that when people, he's right at that line, right? You know, it's not like he's 170, you know, he's like 210, (laughs) you know, he's two something. He's like jacked. He looks great. So he's right at that. He's right at that, uh, you know, raise your eyebrow of suspicion, right? What's so funny, Andrew? Yeah. Like if he was, um, I don't know, if you said 185, I'd be like, yeah, that's probably about right. Mm -hmm. But like 210, it's like, man, no wonder why he gets so many accusations. Like he's 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 jacked, dude. He's really big. Big jacked people exist, it's right? Like, yeah, it's a thing. You know, like I forgot to tell him that my daughter dissed him. I forgot. To him. <laughs> oh, she, dissed him. she said he has no legs. I showed him. I showed her a picture of like him doing bodybuilding. She's like, <laughs> he's got. She's like, he has up. no legs. I was Ouch. like, damn. I was like, I'll, so I forgot to tell him. I gotta tell him uh, in person next time yeah. he's here. Yeah, you can just text him that. <laughs> My kid says you have no legs. Quinn says you have no legs. Start training them more. I hate to sound like a broken record, but your sleep quality most likely sucks. Aww. It's one of the biggest things that we talk about <laughs> on the podcast. So many guests have come on and talked about how sleep can help you stick to your diet, stick to your workout plan, lose body fat, gain muscle, all the good things that you're trying to do, but it's hard to do because you might be snoring. And if you're snoring, that's why we've partnered with Hostage Tape, which is mouth tape that you can put over your nose your mouth when you're asleep to help you stop snoring and breathe through your nose. But if you have been breathing through your nose this whole time while you've been sleeping, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get air through there. That's also why hostage tape has nose strips to help open up your nasal airways and make it easier to breathe through your nose when you're asleep. Now your partner won't be having a f- with you when you're asleep because you'll be actually breathing through your nose. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, that's over at hostagetape.com slash power project where you guys will receive an entire year supply of nasal strips and mouth tape all for less than a dollar a night. Again, that's at hostagetape.com slash power project. Links in the description as well as the podcast show notes. It's it's really cool though, like what he's He's doing. got strong ass legs though. Yeah, very strong. It's like... It's sick to see people doing more than one thing at a pretty odd. It's it's amazing to see experts, right? But like, I think it's great because I think most of us want to be able to be good at multiple things when mm-hmm. it comes to exercise. I mean, it's helped us all out. You have the ability to just go run miles, dog, and then you can hit a gym if you want to. Mm-hmm. You have this skill set, right? So it just kind of shows you can have these skill sets, and it will 
propel you forward. You're not only stuck with a barbell all the time. And when you travel and you don't have access to a barbell, you're now fucked and getting fatter for no reason, right? <laughs> it also uh, <laughs> it's also great to uh, be able to like experience a city that way. They go run, you know. Now I've yeah. run in uh, like Iceland, and I ran in Switzerland, and mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas, and just it's it's a great way to experience places. Getting around on a bike is a really great way to experience places too. But getting around on a run, um, it, then it's w interesting because your perspective of how far away things are changes so much. Uh, yeah, you know, like, oh, it's only five miles away. Like that's not that bad. Like that would be perfect. I'll go five miles there, five miles back. But when you're not used to that shit, you're like, that's way too far. Or even like a mile sometimes, a mile or two. Um, you know, years ago, I'd be like, I'm getting an Uber. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna get a car. You yeah, know, get some sort of ride. I'm not gonna walk that. But Andrew and I walked to that burger place and back, and I think you walked back with us. But it, it was, back, yes. it's kind of nice because you get in that exercise before you go eat whatever the fuck you want to mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. That burger place was amazing. Yeah, that place was awesome. Golden, Golden Tiger. Tiger. Happy Tiger. Golden, Golden Tiger. Tiger. Very good. If you're in Austin, go to Golden Tiger, too. Yeah, not Easy Tiger, which is very sure. close. That, the, the bacon barbecue one's got some spice. That burned the shit. That was way It'd too spicy Make the back of your me. head sweat. <laughs> Only if you're Nigerian, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, John Wellborn's place. Dude, John great. Wilborn is so big. Yeah. Like his head and everything. Mm -hmm. Look at the size of his head. He's a very, very <laughs> big human being. I mean, it matches the rest of his body, so it, it makes does. sense. Yeah. It does. He's a big boy. Yeah, yeah. he's huge. John Wilborn um, is somebody that I ran into kind of fairly early on in my in me being in, like, uh, California. And he was just somebody, like, right off the bat, it seemed like he got it. You know, it seemed mm -hmm. like he he understood so much I think so much of it has to do with his background, uh, being a professional football player for nine years. I think he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. He understood like the incorporation of strength training, powerlifting, um, but not only focusing on that, focusing on some other things as well so that you don't lose a lot of capacities. And it was really great to hear that he's gotten into jujitsu because I think just holding on to a sport, uh, can assist and can help a lot where you don't have to do, uh, for lack of a better term, stupid exercises. <laughs> uh, they still might be useful, might be useful yeah. to like balance on one foot and do some of these exercises that you may have looked at previously and been like, that shit's lame. I just want to squat and deadlift. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if you stay attached to a sport, if you do volleyball, pickleball, um, if you have a routine where you're actually active and actually doing these sports on a frequent basis and you're lifting, um, I think that that can, uh, that can train your feet, that can train your legs, that can train your body uh, in a way that um, can help keep athleticism. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's just keeping some involvement of it so that you don't, it, it doesn't go away over time. Like I've still been doing one sprint a day at least. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because like, who, 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 oh, Joel yes, Green. Joel, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've still been at least, on the days that I don't do more than one, I'll still hit, hit one sprint a day just so that my body knows this is what it feels like to put almost everything into you mm -hmm. and with that type of speed, right? And it's it's all this stuff is reaping benefits. It's insane. I figured something out on a sprint, by the way. What'd you figure out? I figured out that if you run like you have shit in your pants, hmm. that you can actually go pretty fast without hurting yourself. <laughs> so if you just take smaller steps... <laughs> <laughs> so you like you mean tuck your butt like Hank Hill? Yeah, yeah. You like, tuck your butt down a little bit, and you um, just keep your knees bent. So it's not a sprint, sprint. You're not going like yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. But I think the issue with a with a a full on sprint is just the stretch that you get reaching. Yeah, and you you know you're hitting the ground with a lot of force, and then your back foot is kicking up, and you can get a lot of a uh, kind of quad stretch, and then there's just like a lot of potential to like kind of hurt your back or twist something mm -hmm. slightly. If you run like you're shitting, <laughs> like mm -hmm. you just shit your pants, um, you just run with like your feet a lot closer. You can actually go pretty dang fast without hurting yourself. So it's almost scary. like pretending like you're running downhill. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andrew knows about shit himself. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Do you want to pull up today's genius? <laughs> For now, we're going to call this genius of the day. But we, we yeah, pull up today's genius, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. Well, we won't be time. able to hear it, though, will we? Yeah. We'll be able to read Absolutely. it. Absolutely. No, we'll be able to hear it. Uh, 
it. Let's go. The only reason people admire bodybuilders uh, who have built their body with muscle and not um, obese people who have built their body with eating huge amounts of food uh -huh. <laughs> is because there's uh, prejudice against fat people. And so bodybuilding could benefit from including the non-competitive um, display of fat bodies alongside muscular ones. He argued fat that bodies alongside muscular ones. <laughs> so she's saying that mass is mass. Yeah. And that we're just uh, hating. And that's why we don't appreciate that mass. It's a different, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a different level of self-discipline. <laughs> Yeah. The discipline to just. <laughs> I, over and over. Look at those reps. I like the biceps. Just crushing oh. it. I like where she's going with it, though, because you got someone who's like 4% body fat standing next to someone who's 44% body fat. Like the inverse would be hard. Like how, how, uh, how slanted could somebody make their body fat percentage? Like what would be. Like, could you be 80, 20, like, like ground beef? <laughs> like, could you get yourself that fat? It's probably impossible, right? Yeah. Oh. Yo, I, <laughs> I have some friends that got their body fat tested before. And I'm like, I don't understand. This is like an IQ test. Mm. Like, who goes and gets an IQ test? <laughs> People that are fucking smart. Right. Duh, only in America, man. Don't get an IQ test if you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go and get your body fat tested if you're, I mean, you already know, like, it's not good. But just the Don't go. <laughs> Don't get it tested. Hey, this test is not for you. <laughs> the test is for the asshole that wants to be like, I'm 7%. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the fact that she said is prejudice, though, that's, that's oh, like man. prejudice. And then she's just, she's just like, we should put them on stage together and appreciate both of them. Only in America, dog. <laughs> <laughs> only, only here. Ah, uh, I'm not maybe. Even, uh, uh, maybe oh. like maybe I could see like big and fat, like that old Eddie Hall picture mm. when Eddie Hall was like maxed out when he was yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. huge and like winning uh, some world's strongest man. Mm -hmm. Like that would be interesting to see him on stage next to like a men's physique guy. <laughs> It would be because he'd make that men's physique guy look small. <laughs> was, right? Yeah, the contrast would be crazy. I mean, he probably had like, uh, like his thighs were probably fucking forty <laughs> inches in circumference or something. You know? So yeah. you can find that picture of him. I'll try, I'll look it up. And then I remember um, Sean Baker. He would post this like picture of like I forgot what what year it was, but it was like the world's like heaviest man. Mm, and uh -huh. he was like, "That's just like everybody you see these days now." <laughs> so like, there was a point where like seeing somebody. That was bigger was like an attraction you know, where you can pay money at the yeah. circus to go see this. It's amazing when people say it's like their genetics. It's like it's in no one's genetics to right. be 400 pounds. Sorry, but it's just not. Hey, man, those Samoans, though, they got to claim. <laughs> they can of, be big. They can be big and athletic as fuck. Mm -hmm. When you see a 6'5", 350-pound Samoan at running at you. Oof. That's a big boy. <laughs> Look at that so form. Big. Yeah. Jesus boy. Christ. Yeah. It's That's got to be uncomfortable. That's a power belly. Though. His belly's yeah. creating an that eclipse. Power belly. It's good to see he's healthy nowadays because, like, that that doesn't look very healthy, you know? No. <laughs> yeah. Were you guys uh, kind of surprised that uh, Tom was, like, uh, so forthcoming about, like, podcast information and stuff? I mean, he was helping us with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a super helpful dude. He just likes, I guess being of service to people around him because like, yeah, we were asking him a lot of questions and he was very open with everything. Mm. Yeah, he's a cool dude, dope. man. He's a, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Like when you're at that level, like he, he kind of like doesn't really care. Well, I guess he doesn't have competition. Not that like anybody needs it or wants it, but he's just like, yeah, here's fucking everything. I, I, you know, I dare you to try to like be better <laughs> than our podcast. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, the fact, like how he know. feels about blacks, you know? <laughs> You guys will hear that on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, they will. Oh Tom really gosh. shows his true colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, he was. Never mind. Yeah, what he's is this, funny though. It says on his uh, like Wikipedia, it's like black comedy or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then he tried to say like, oh, because his comedy's dark, and you wouldn't let him get away with it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't let, let him get away with it. <laughs> You're like, no, I think this is like very specific. <laughs> <laughs> There's this between black humor and black comedy and then dark humor. Yeah, it right? would have said dark. It would have said, it does say dark. Oh, he does, does black comedy and dark, dark. comedy. Oh, he does both. He does both. So do with that what you will. <laughs> hey, but, okay, so, but people still enjoy watching like those eating contests. 
So if those, like most of those like people that eat, they're not really that big. Why? Okay, so but, like, do you guys know, like why is Vigorous Pete and all those people in those eating competitions, like you'll see the littlest Asian woman just going, <laughs> and just going to and town. Like, they oh, don't yeah. gain any weight. Yeah, like, some of them are small, yeah. Mm -hmm. How? Is it just a metabolism? Or they just don't eat a lot? I, I think know. they don't normally eat a lot. Probably just puke it all out. I don't know. Ah, maybe like, they're purgers. Oof. Yeah, Furious Pete said that he doesn't like to eat that way. So like, you know, he... He can eat that way. He's got like world records for speed eating and stuff. Mm -hmm. but With says, great power. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Was it uh, hard for other one of you guys being away for a long time with the girlfriend and dogs and I the don't care about baby? <laughs> no, I'm joking, Sam. I love you. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, nah. I was calling her every day. It was good to be back. Yeah, it was. It was tough. Uh, one of the nights, my son was having a hard time going to sleep. And so Stephanie was like, oh, just like FaceTime me, whatever. And I kind of just like walked into an ambush because I didn't know he was like having a rough day. And so like as soon as like I come on screen, he just starts bawling. Mm. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like I'm trying not to fall apart. But well, he was crying because you weren't there? He was just crying because he seen my face. And he was just like, I miss you. And oh. I'm like, fuck. Mm. So that was super hard. But like. Yeah, it just felt so good to be home, you know, like it was cool being, you know, out and ex experiencing a lot of cool stuff. Um, I personally enjoy like a lot of alone time. So like finally having that after whatever, two and a half years that my son's been here, it was really nice, but I, I couldn't wait to get back. Like I really wanted to be back home. <laughs> It's amazing when you are just in a bed by yourself. Just, yeah. I think your sleep quality goes through the roof. I think uh, Matthew Walker and some other people have talked about this before. They're not even sure if you should, like, sleep with somebody mm -hmm. else necessarily. Maybe. That Brian Johnson guy doesn't sleep with. Anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it actually, I mean, I don't know, it makes some sense. My mm -hmm. bed, luckily, is, is pretty big, but it's still pretty awesome to sleep by yourself. Yeah. I think I told you guys when I was traveling and I was overseas, they have... Uh, Separate blankets. <laughs> yeah. Really? Which is so smart. Because <laughs> they always end up with a blanket situation. A little tug of war. Yeah. You know what's odd, though? Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, it just means I love my girl. But, like, we both sleep worse without yeah. when we're, when we're like, if I go somewhere and she, like, even her on mm -hmm. an eight-sleep mattress all alone, her sleep quality goes down. Like, she can't <laughs> fall asleep well, and I can't fall asleep. That's because you're sucking on her nipples to fall asleep. <laughs> I do like to <laughs> suckle before it's bed. It, 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 for some reason, it just puts me down, you know? So. I like grabbing a hold of a butt or something. Mm, something. You know? Yeah. But then sometimes they don't sleep. <laughs> Do you ever like to be like Little Spoon? I sometimes I sometimes like to be Little Spoon. Depends mm -hmm. on like my, how I feel that oh, night, yeah. you know? But yeah, just sometimes being, I love being me. snuggled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More often than not, that would happen because I like sleeping on my right side. Yeah. But with my son, it just doesn't happen. It's so. tough though too. I'm gassy. So, you know, you gotta be careful back there. <laughs> They, they know what they're signing up for. Hey, like, if that's aimed your way, you got to be, you yeah, know, can it's hot. I think you guys should try. I don't, like, as we've been doing all this shit, right, uh, as our body's been changing, my sleep has, like, after Kador came, <laughs> I started sleeping, like, so I'll sleep on this side, and I'll sleep like this, and like, my knees will come up, so I'm almost, like, in a fetal position when mm -hmm. I sleep, and on the other side, I'll sleep like this, and it's the best sleep I've ever gotten in my life. Have you guys tried that? I do that. I sleep like that. You sleep mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just you like, start out on my right side for a little while. I very rarely end up on my back. It's like right side, left side. It's like yeah. you're human garaging yourself. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I have to, do it. I have to mm -hmm. do it on my right side, but I can't put my hand, because like I'll, I'll kind of do one of these things right yeah. here. My hand can no longer go under my pillow or else my elbow and my forearms start falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So it has to be under my head. And then same thing on this side. If I if I lay too hard on my left shoulder, my whole arm goes to sleep. And if I lay on my back, I just snore like a freaking bear. So it's like it has to be on my right side. Fair. Kind of. How about up that right uh, red ash, bone marrow, and bread? Dude, all the bread. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck! Bread. Everything at that restaurant is immaculate. Everything is good. Everything. Everything was amazing. I yeah, love how the, the guy told us how many good. different steaks there were. And then he came back and reported that they didn't have hardly any of the ones that we tried to order. <laughs> that was amazing. Because yeah. they run out, I guess, of different sizes or whatever. That 40 ounce didn't feel like 40 ounces. I could have easily eaten it. went 50. down smooth. It went down so well. Yeah, the yeah. 32 or 36 that I had was just right. Mm -hmm. It was good. I thought you were going to have to get up out of your seat when Dan came over and was harassing you. That boy, bro. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu giant. He is. He is a funny... <laughs> that's all there is to it. A large kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh he's funny, you know. He uh we did a little floral inside and 
His joints are large. Mm. I couldn't put my hand oh, around yeah, his, his wrist. wrist. Yeah. He's just overall big and he's, he's like 21 years yeah, old. He's a young kid, That's huh? scary. 285 at 21 mm. years old. He's just going to get bigger. Did you run into a bunch of freaks when you went to some of these? Uh... Oh, well, I mean, oh, there's also this guy, uh, Davis Asari. Davis Asari is, uh, he from Norway. He's Ghanaian, but he's like muscular as hell for no reason. Uh, but Davis was also, he's at New Wave. He's built like a freak too. But Dan, <laughs> Dan is just a large Romanian. I loved seeing Jimmy the whole time. He was so uncomfortable. <laughs> Jimmy, our boy, Jimmy House. It's just like, I deal with this guy every day. And he's just like, sorry, everybody. Like, Jimmy, I like, feel for you, man. There's a couple times where Jimmy just kind of Dan's like, a unique uh, individual. <laughs> He's a unique individual. Dan's buddy that he's hanging out with just chilling. He's like, he's got to mm. deal with that every day, too. <laughs> he loves to he touch you. Towers. He loves to touch people. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, great experience, though. Yeah, super grateful for Jimmy House, though. Like, um, so the way they roll, they, they do classes at New Wave, like, I'm not supposed to be there. Mm. Like, a white belt's not supposed to be joining that Nogi class. And he was like, no, 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 he'll be fine, he'll be fine. And he let me, like, roll with him a little bit. Just being able to say that I was, I took part of one of those classes as a white belt is fucking, it's, it's so cool. And then he was like, damn, for never rolling, you know, Nogi, he's like, you did just fine. Even He's giving me 2% or whatever it is right. in positional rounds. But it was just really cool to just, like I said, mm. take part of that. So super grateful. The level of instruction at that school, too, is pretty crazy. The, yeah. other, the second day, I think it was an advanced, they're all advanced classes, but Gary Tonin was teaching. Jeez. And I barely roll Nogi. All the things he was saying was literally just going over my head. Because yeah. it's like, holy shit, what is, like, these techniques aren't things that I've been taught. It's It's really cool, though, but yeah. Are they instructing like as you're rolling or something or no, no, more no. like in between? It's it's like you instruct on a movement, do it fast, build on that movement. But the movements that they're building on in Nogi are pretty, pretty ad, like advanced. Under You have to have advanced understanding of mm -hmm. leg entanglements, mm -hmm. which I don't because I don't roll much Nogi right. anyway. I know escaping stuff, but like it was it was great. So that was that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And it was like more like, OK, here's step one and two. Go. This was like here's step eight, nine, ten. <laughs> And then skip to 13, and then we'll come back and we'll do, like, 20 and 21 because you guys already know the middle stuff. Mm, and yeah. I'm just watching, like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> I'm glad I was sitting out this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was tough. I would have looked. I would have made my – I would have just yeah, embarrassed the, myself. Uh, the attention to detail, you know, as you move up the ladder, gets to be more and more intense. Mm -hmm. um, with When I did pro wrestling or even in powerlifting, certain gyms I would go to, they would give – uh, instruction or criticism on every single rep or every single set. Yeah. You know, they might sometimes, depending on the person, sometimes they wait till like the session's over and then they talk about it more. Or sometimes people are trying to correct you on the fly, but trying to correct you like as you're going, sometimes mm -hmm. you only get so much uh, fixing done. And sometimes that can be frustrating. And then sometimes it could slow down. Like if you're all squatting together, mm -hmm. sometimes that could slow down the whole group a little too much. So it kind of just depends. But um, I remember getting coached so much that I, it, w it was like, I'd just be frustrated. I would just be like, I'd be like burnt out, not from the lifting, yeah. but just from getting coached. I just sit there for a minute and I'd be like, man, I'm doing everything wrong. Like every set, every set, there's something wrong. Like beautiful feeling. my chest is up one time, my chest is down the next time. Yeah. Um, one time it's up too high. One time it's down too low. <laughs> You know, one time my right knee is pushing out mm. and the next time it's not. And it's just like, God damn it. <laughs> and then so for me, I, I was like, you know what? I just want to get so explosive and so fast that no one can really see or say anything. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the goal. Like try to, you know, on a box squat, try to sit down as quick as I can and pop back up as quick as I can. And hopefully I'll just, you know, fly right through it. And eventually that would happen here and there. But it was it was hard to be able to nail that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Gets annoying, right? When you keep getting coached over and over again. Yeah, well, I mean, you need it though. Yeah, no, and, but it's it's frustrating because like so like if I'm training with Encima, which is an awesome you know partner to have because uh, one he's not going to let me get away with any any mistakes, but two like if I can just drill with somebody that big, then in a live role I feel like I have a bit of an advantage because I'm not going to go up against somebody that's 250 and a brown belt. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating because like we're we're doing some like uh, where I'm like sweeping him, like I'm picking him up, so I'm trying to grab Encima, put his body on mine, and then kick his legs out so I can jump on top. 
and sometimes it would work and other times mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, fuck, like I cannot kick you up. And, you know, he would school me on what I need to do mm. and it would work. And then other times I'm like, fuck, come on, man. Like I, I just, it, it's be... frustrating. It's very frustrating. Aaron Alexander held me again. Oh, you did? <laughs> mm-hmm. I wish you took some videos or pictures. Uh, I think we did. I think it's on his, uh, his, I think it might be on his Instagram. My screen. Did some acrobatics yeah, yeah. Or whatever he calls that stuff god what that should partner you oh, no, it's not partner yoga it's something else but yeah it's weird but it feels amazing <laughs> aaron's just that kind of guy yeah you know yeah you want to be yeah, he's a little he's a little different we did a cold plunge after after uh after he did some of that stuff to me and then mm-hmm. we did a little bit of training and then cold plunge and then podcasted and it was great too. That was at Squatch, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a at On It. I didn't realize On It has like three cold plunges and a sauna or whatever. Oh shit. And we went over there and I did some uh Jared Crazy Trainer taught some juggling stuff, but that isn't mm. both these gyms are amazing places. <laughs> and Aaron is huge. Oh yeah, there we go. That's he, feel pretty he wanted good. me to like reach through his legs and grab my own ankles. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, <laughs> he pooped yeah, a little. He told, yeah, he told me like, like uh, uh, just to relax and try to poop a little bit. <laughs> that is a really weird feeling to have his like fucking toes digging into my so ass. Yeah, probably felt kind of nice. Wild. Though. It felt amazing. Yeah, it felt amazing. It takes a little while to sort of like relax and to be able to like get used to it. By the way, guys, hit up the Discord. There's a bunch of channels in there, but. There's a place to ask questions there. And then if you guys have guests that you think would be interesting, there's also that in the Discord. Mm. So you need to hit that spot up. It's it's there somewhere in the description. Join up. Lots of people in there. It's a good time. Yeah, it was an awesome trip. I think we were there for, what, four or five days? Yeah, yeah. Sunday through Thursday. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot done. Um, my podcast with Nick Bear I thought went off really well. That was for his uh, podcast, podcast with Aaron Alexander, and then also with John Wellborn. So people can look for some of that stuff coming soon. And then Segura episode will be next week. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. I think that's about it, right? I think so. Austin, Texas, we're going to have to come back some other time. 100%. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye. Hi there. I know you guys like this video, so uh, check this one out.